it is so cool that you can use analog equipment in a plug-in. I can't believe this is real life. Would you like to have access to over $42,000 worth of audio gear, but you don't have $42,000 to burn? Do the brand names Neve, Solid State Logic, API, and Poltec make your ears salivate? Do you not like hardware because of the recall time or because it's just way too expensive to maintain? Well, there's a new company called Access Analog, and that may be the answer to your problems. The introduction sounded like an advertisement because I'm excited to talk about this new service. As you guys know, I'm a fan of MixAnalog.com and what they have been doing for the bedroom or the basement or the attic, you know, music producer, audio engineer, whatever. Guys like me, guys like you who are on a tight budget, but we would like to have, you know, very luxurious audio quality. Well, there's a new company in town, a, a competitor to Mix Analog, and they're doing things differently. First of all, they have all their stuff contained within a plugin. So yes, real analog audio hardware can now be found in a plug-in. Secondly, they have all brand name gear. None of their stuff is clones. It's all things that you can buy off the shelf. So it's expensive stuff, but it is the real deal, holy field, etc., etc. And I wanted to try out the plugin slash service, and luckily I found a coupon code thanks to the Access Analog guys, and also they sent me one for a fuller review. So again, this is just a first impressions review. If you want to try this stuff out for yourself, I will put a coupon code on screen right now, and it will also be available in the video description. So let's get started. By the way, if the audio sounds different, it's because I'm testing out a lavalier microphone. I may start using that instead of using the Shure SM7B like I have been all these years. And that's just so that I don't have a big microphone in front of my face when I'm trying to mix. So here we go. All right, so I just heard a little bit of audio from my new microphone. Well, not really new microphone, but the microphone I'm going to be using for these videos from here on out and unfortunately because it's an omnidirectional microphone you can hear the reflection off of the ceiling and the wall and actually the desk a lot easier than when i'm using the shore sm50 or the shore sm7b but whatever all right let me just get right to this guy so this is the access analog analog matrix plugin and at the top here we have a 20 decibel plus or minus input gain knob now unfortunately you can't see which value you know this is but that's okay you're supposed to use your ears right at the top here you enter your email address and then the password now where do you get all this stuff from? Well, it's really simple. So if by chance you accidentally downloaded this plugin first and didn't read anything on the website, when you go to click on one of these modules, which I don't think you can do unless you've been signed in already. So you click this and it'll go to the reserve equipment page. Okay. And now they actually tell you important notes. Use the reset button in case you run into streaming issues. And the reset button is right over here underneath the buffer history. And then if you're using Reaper, which I am, disable the preferences, audio buffering, anticipated FX processing. This is very important because by default it is on. And if you don't do this, guess what? It's going to be all messed up. <laughs> it's going to be delayed off of the other audio that's in your project. So where do you disable that? Right here. 
this checkbox. Just uncheck it. That's all you got to do. All right. The other thing you can do is to just put this on your stereo master bus, but I'm telling you, it's better off to just do it this way because you're eventually going to want to use this plugin within the context of the mix on tracks. All right. So this is the reserve page again, and they warn you, you know, if you're using Wi-Fi, you need to have a very good signal. I recommend personally just having a category 65 or cat 5 cable plugged into a router because then it'll be very stable. You don't have to worry about, you know, somebody turning the microwave on and stuff like that. And it also says if you're using a firewall, enable port 47300. And yes, here's the cool thing. If nobody reserved the equipment 30 minutes before you did, you can actually use it for an extra 30 minutes. So I appreciate that access analog. I don't know how often you're gonna, or I don't know if you're gonna have that in there permanently, but that is a very nice gesture. Let's go through this. So here's all the equipment. And right now they actually are upgrading their manly very moo. So that's, if I don't know if you can even choose that. Let's see if you can or not. Yeah, so you can choose it. I don't know why. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So they are anticipating that it will be available on Friday this week. So that's their goal. <laughs> and to go back, I just have to click reserve up here again. Here's all the equipment again. And like I said, this is like $42,000 worth of stuff. Okay. I think the cheapest thing they have is like $700, the warm audio Pultec. And anything you want to rent, they made it really simple. So the sale price is $10 per hour. In the future, they say it'll be $20. I've got to be honest, like this, the introductory prices are perfect. And I... I mean, maybe they will keep them at $10 an hour, but $20 an hour is pushing it. I, I don't care how good the gear is. Realistically, if your potential customer is the bedroom studio man or woman, then $10 an hour is like, that's affordable. You know, because if you start really putting these gear chains together, you know, just three items is $30 an hour. So anyway... That's up to them. If they want to boost the price up, then that's that's okay. But uh, the weird thing is the warm audio uh, is the same price as the manly. <laughs> so, all right, let's say I want to reserve the 1176. All right, so I click that, number one. Now, if you have a stereo file or a, a, if you're doing a mix, you know, I think like the Paul Tech would be a perfect example of this. So on a mix... If you want two Pultec equalizers, because they are mono, then you have to reserve both of them. So let's say I click that, select duration, one hour. You can do it up to three hours. One hour, hit next. And then on here, I can click, I think it's basically like the next half hour mark. So 1030, I'll pick that. It's reserved for an hour. And then I click reserve more, go back, and then I choose pull tech number two for the same time, one hour. And then what was it, 1030? So 1030, and then there we go. So that's 20 bucks for two pieces of gear for an hour. And if you just wanna do a half hour, what was the price of that again? Okay, $6. So it'd be a total of about $12 for a half hour, which isn't horrible, but I'm telling you, if you have more than one track to process, you, you may as well get the hour, and then you could probably do about like three or four tracks. For mastering, obviously, you know, half hour might be enough for one song, but yeah, anyway, that's how you reserve it, and then you hit next. And I, now I have to center the video because my information is already on there. 
So, all right, I'm going to go back and cancel this stuff. If, yeah, so if you want to, if you accidentally reserve something, then you hit the trash can icon. And I don't know what happens if you do edit. Let's see. Okay, so you can change which gear and which t duration. Okay, that's cool. And that's about it for that. So I'm going to go back to the plugin now. Once you reserve your equipment, you log in here, like the website said, about a half hour before your time is going to happen. And if nobody else has reserved the equipment at that time, then you can use it for an extra half hour. So if you only reserved a half hour of time and paid for a half hour of time and nobody else reserved it before you, before that 30 minute mark, you get it for an hour, which is great. That's why I said I think that you know they, those guys at Access Analog are being very generous right now. I appreciate that. So yeah, you have all this equipment to choose from. And this is real gear, by the way, guys. Like I said, I used the Poltec, I used an 1176. I couldn't believe how much gain reduction I could get out of the 1176. Insane, insane. Yes, it changed the character a little bit, but wow is all I gotta say. And the LA-2A, I said earlier, I tried to use it, yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> I dragged and dropped it and it just said, nope. So I'm going to let those guys know that the LA-2A was not working. And let's see, the API 5500 worked great. I don't know what the Lynx loopback is. They said that basically it's just a cable going from the output to the input. I don't really know why somebody would want to rent this, but <laughs> it's there. The Aurora stereo loopback. I don't know if maybe you can drive it hard. I know some converters you can drive hard and it sounds good. So I'm going to check that out at some point just to see what that's all about during my full during my full review but let's see i mean you get an sslg comp okay let me let me go into the controls because you guys can see all this stuff yourself so basically here's how it works after you type in your password you press connect and then that's when you can see if somebody's already using the gear then you can't obviously use it if it says reserved that means it's yours and yeah, I think in rack is the language they use to show that you can't use it, but somebody else is, or you're using it. Because yes, you can actually use multiple instances of this plugin on your mix so that you can, again, mix within the context of, you know, your plugins and then this, the real hardware. And what I found really advantageous was that I could use ARC while mixing. I could also use... Um, let's see, what I did with the drums is I had already loaded the Pink 3 equalizer, which is an API 5500 emulation, and I basically just transferred the settings from this to the Access Analog plugin. And for the bass guitar, um, let's see, I had the actual amp simulator going on first. And then once I rendered it, guess what? Now I don't have to use the bass amp simulator anymore. And again, with the I'm sorry, the electric guitar, rhythm guitar, I had the API 5500, and I had my amp simulator. And on one of these, I actually did have a plug-in after Access Analogs. When I do vocals, I'm definitely going to have a, a de-esser. I might have a tape emulation plug-in. So having the ability to process within your mix really opens up some possibilities. 
So let's see. Here's the important settings. All right. First of all, the transmit format is not the same as your project. See, right now my project is 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. And if you don't believe me, it's right here. So there, there it is right there. Now my hardware, I don't want to click this because it might mess up the screen capture, but my hardware is set for a 44.1 kilohertz output. Now I don't know if when this thing does offline processing, if it does the project sample rate or it does my hardware sample rate. That's a test I haven't done yet. But this transmit format allows you to choose not only the sample rate that you're currently using, but also other ones, including compressed formats. So if you have a very bad internet connection, you can choose all the way down to 128 kilobits per second. Now it's limited to 48 kilohertz. So my guess is they are using the Opus format. I haven't confirmed that yet. It's one of the questions I'm gonna ask them, but yes, you can even use 128 kilobits a second. I would try to go with 256 minimum, but if your internet connection is good enough, which mine is, you can actually do lossless, which sounds phenomenal. And like I said, you can even switch it to 44.1 or 48 or whatever you want to do. Switch it so that you can actually have a lower buffer setting because the lower this buffer setting, the quicker the controls update when you change them. But here's the great thing. You can have it on the worst setting, right? But... It has this excellent thing down here, and like I said to the guys, whoever thought of this mechanism deserves a gold star. Because what you do is, when you're finished with all your settings, you click ARM, this button right here, you click ARM, you go to the front of your session, so 0000, zero, 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 zero. you hit play, it automatically starts recording and from what I've been told it records to RAM and you're limited to about 10 minutes total I assume that's at 24 bit 96 kilohertz and then once it's finished recording once it gets to the end of the session it stops automatically the process button lights up, you click that, and at that point, your file starts uploading to their server, and then once it's finished uploading, it starts processing, and then once it's finished processing, you can then save it right here with the save button. So, yeah, no matter how good your internet connection, this should work relatively well. I did have issues with when it was playing back during the offline processor, I had to actually up my buffer to 2,500 milliseconds. Normally I could use it at 340 milliseconds. 150 was not fast enough at 24 bit 96 kilohertz. Again, you're sending audio in real time and also receiving audio in real time. So you really gotta have a fast, stable internet connection Otherwise, set your buffer to the highest setting, set your transmit format to the lowest quality, and you should still be able to work it. And here's the great thing. It's not a guessing game because this buffer history meter right here, see how it's in the middle? The orange goes in the middle. That means that your internet connection's fast enough. And if this thing drops or goes too high, it'll actually tell you like buffer underrun or buffer overflow. So at that point, you really should change your settings. If your internet is so bad that you can't use it even at these lowest settings, then sorry, you're out of luck. And at that point, I would say check out mixanalog.com because they have a one-way stream where it's only downloading once you upload your files, and that works better probably for you. Oh, by the way, uh, if you hit reset, that should help with the streaming issues. If not then like I said, you, this is not good for you. And then hit clear to change the meter and you can see it again. Output gain, so yes, not only do you have an input gain, 
You also have an output gain so that your next plugin is not being overloaded. That's great. And then this little button over here, yes, there are settings. So, you know, I can get rid of the thumbnails to the left. That way the list is easier to see. And as you can see, the very moo is out. And stream audio to server, there's no reason why you would want to uncheck that. And they said that there may be servers in the future. That's what this is for. And also you can do a log file, which I enabled, but by default it's off. So yeah, that's really about it. Oh, I forgot to mention. So when you drag and drop these, you see how it says left or L and R, which means left and right, and then it has these arrows right here. So you actually don't drag this to this part of the window. That's a little bit confusing at first, but you get it after you do it the first time. So you drag and drop, oh, I clicked it and it opened up my web browser. So you click and drag and drop to one of these boxes right here, okay? And at that point, the plugin loads up in this area, my only major complaint is that you can't resize the GUI because I, I got to tell you, a lot of times the controls are way too small to read in this box right here. So in a future plugin release, I hope that they make it so that you can, you know, once this gear is loaded up, I would like to be able to just close this area. I don't know if you can do it right now. No, you can't. So close this area and make this part bigger. I don't need to have this really big. So if you can make this section smaller and this bar down here, I don't even know what this is for. This could also be made smaller, but I need to have the module. The main thing that I'm manipulating needs to be a lot larger. Otherwise, it's not as usable as it should be. So yeah, after that's all set up, actually, you know what I would really do? is put all this stuff, all this, except the buffer history meter could then go into the settings menu. That's really about my only complaint. Oh, I forgot to show you. So in order to save time, because if you do offline processing, it doubles the amount of time that it takes to send the audio through. If you have a very good internet connection, you don't need to do that. You can actually record it to a track and I'll show you how to do that in Reaper. So let's see, um, if you're on the master track, I don't think you can do it. <laughs> I might be wrong about that, but the way, oh, you know what? Maybe you can route it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna make a new track and then I'm gonna go to the input output routing button and I'm going to receive, I don't know, the, the bass guitar track, all right? And then I'm gonna go to right here. I'm gonna right click on the meter and choose record output. And I didn't know which one to choose at first, but if you have a stereo signal, obviously choose stereo. If you have mono, choose mono, but latency compensated. Should I record with that? No, you shouldn't because the plugin already does it for you. So with a mono signal, I'm going, actually just choose stereo just to be on the safe side. So choose stereo, even if you don't really need it, and then arm the track as if you were recording somebody. And then what you're gonna do is, I don't know if you need to record with solo on, but that's the way I was doing it. I guess this is more testing I need to do, but assume that you need to mute everything else, which I would do because then that disables the other plugins. So actually, here's what I would do. Select everything, disable all your plugins, except the track that has access analog, analog matrix on it, and then hit record. And the reason you wanna do that is because the other plugins could mess up with your computer processing and then you'll have an issue with the audio glitch and you don't want that. So yeah, oh by the way, normally I would have this in ASIO mode. The only reason I have it on wave out is because I am doing a screen capture, 
But yeah, so you just play it back, and as you're playing it back, well, I guess I could do it for you right now. So, um, okay, so I'm going to receive these two inputs. So I'll do the acoustic guitar track, and then the one that doesn't have a name on it right now. <laughs> Bad Adam, you should be labeling all your tracks no matter what. And then once I hit record, you know what, if I mute this, I wonder if it'll go through. So I'm going to hit record, and you'll see what happens down here once it starts playing. Okay, so it looks like, hold on, okay. Yeah, so that's the way I did it before, and then you hit save all. And that's your track. And I would definitely monitor it while it's playing to make sure that you don't have any audio glitches. But that is the route I would take, no pun intended, because again, you're going to eat up time from your session and you want to maximize your dollar. And that's the way to do it. So I am using a Verizon Fios well, I thought it was 7575, but I tested it last night with Colorado because that's where the servers are for this access analog thing. So I tested it out on a Colorado server and got a 100, 100 megabits per second internet connection. So I don't know if Verizon made it faster or I got lucky, but my internet connection is very fast, very stable. If yours isn't, I feel sorry for you, and this service may not be for you, but if it is, then great, because now you have access to a ton of audio equipment. I'm trying to find the plug-in now. I don't know where it went. Not there. Okay, there it is. So you have all this audio equipment. Also, you can use your mouse wheel to scroll down. That's another thing. I would hope that they put the reserved equipment the ones that you're paying for i would hope that they would put it higher up the list or at least give you the option to sort it because i don't like having to scroll around trying to find the equipment that i reserved but uh look these are all minor complaints in the grand scheme of things it is so cool that you can use analog equipment in a plug-in i can't believe this is real life like, seriously oh my god like 2019 is just we're living in great times i mean we got plenty of food we have water coming from pipes that's clean i i just made a joke last night um i always wanted to have a tv in the bathroom and realistically why do i need that now because my smartphone has it and i can access youtube while i'm you know doing a number two i mean all right i don't know why i'm going into this but guys check out access analog i'll put the coupon code on screen you can reserve up to six items during your first reservation so if you want to check out six different things over a period of six hours then do that if you want to reserve something on thursday or friday you know this is what you do so you you know reserve the, the distressor reserve the ssl fusion reserve the poltec you know you can either do it all at the same time so you have six pieces of gear all reserved for i believe it's either a half hour or one hour don't quote me on that but it's at least a half hour to test these out one at a time I think it's an hour because when I use it, I can reserve it for an hour. Or the Neve 33609N or the API 5500. I don't know if you can reserve the 5500 all day long or for six hours straight. I, I don't know how that works. I think you can do it six. I think it's just each piece of gear you can try out one time for one hour, but you can reserve up to six of them for that coupon code. So enjoy it, and I, I gotta say, like this really opens up the possibilities for my own mixing services because this is the real deal. And like I've said to you guys before, when it comes to compressors 
especially, but also saturation, so like tube gear, like the Poltec. It's just like, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Compression, you can get a lot more compression out of real gear. EQ, I still say acoustical audio, I think has that down. I don't really need hardware EQs, but compressors, I'm certainly going to be using this. And I really, really like, actually the Silver Bullet to me was the, I'll call it the sleeper module because basically it's like having a Neve and an API line amp. So it's like Slate VCC, but real. You also have a back sandal equalizer. So it's not just the line input flavor. So, you know, definitely check out the Silver Bullet. Definitely check out the LA-2A when it's running and the real Poltec. I mean, this is uh, check everything out that you can because, you know, you, you never know what you're going to like. And even though, yeah, Acoustical Audio's EQs are good, I still hope that they add some more EQs. I love that they put the API 5500 in here. And also the SSL Fusion has an equalizer as well. So all great stuff. I also heard that this is an SSL bus compressor that's better than like your original one from the SSL 4000, like this is the SSL 9000 G bus compressor, the super analog one. <laughs> so yeah, and I have not checked out the black box yet. That one's a mystery to me. I'll probably skip using the warm audio Poltec because honestly, like why, unless somebody else, you know, has the originals reserved, I don't know, you know, if this is the same price to reserve it as the real deal, like, I, I don't understand why I would want to have this other than maybe you like the sound of this better than this one, which could be the case. But anyway, oh, and I forgot to mention, if you do have a stereo file, you need to have two of these reserved. I also told them that it's not always clear which ones are stereo modules. So hopefully they add that note in there somewhere. Like the LA-2A is a mono compressor. And that's another thing. I forgot to mention one other thing, guys. In Reaper, if you have a mono track and then you put a stereo module first and then you put a mono module. And I ran into this problem when I used the Silver Bullet first and then I ran it into... 11176 guess what happened the audio on the right was unprocessed the audio on the left was processed so the way i fixed that first i tried to do the routing that didn't work so then i went to the track itself and i panned it all the way left and then i mono summed this button down here i mono summed my output and at that point, I could hear just my left channel. You got to be careful about that. I hope in the future that can be solved within the Analog Matrix plugin. But for now, that's the workaround. So, like I said, check it out for yourself. And I will be having a full review of their gear. And I will also be using this for plugin shootout videos that will be on the Real Home Recording Patreon page in the future sometime next year so thank you all for watching this thank you access analog for giving me a coupon code to try out their gear and i hope you guys try this out for your own mixes because it's a revelation and to me for those special tracks for those special mixes it's worth it thanks for watching everybody